Hey everyone, did T-Mobile just make OnePlus relevant all over again? I would have to say emphatically yes. Let's find out why on Engineer Reacts. OnePlus just had an announcement last week about their upcoming OnePlus 10 Pro. And most people in the tech space know that this is actually in some ways a downgrade. Where people are concerned is the camera system. So you still have the same main sensor, but OnePlus literally had probably the best wide angle camera of last year. When the global release finally launched for the OnePlus 10 Pro, we were met with eight gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes of storage. Now, Having it come to the US market when you don't have expanded storage options such as like SD card support, it, it makes people have to kind of choose like, well, is this really a good option? And most people that are savvy on tech would probably bypass it. But this is where everything changed. T-Mobile has stepped up and basically has said, if you are into trying something new, a new brand, we want to give this to you for free. So one of the standout trade-ins that they have currently is you can trade in an iPhone XR and get the phone for free or a Pixel 5. Now, if you want to get it for just 300 bucks, you can, there's an option to trade in a Pixel 3 or 3a and also a LG V50 or an iPhone 7. So there's a lot of options and I really think this has kind of changed the game now. Now, OnePlus and more specifically Oppo can do what it's, it's tending to do. Now, let's talk about the intangibles. So, this is a standard slab phone, okay? When we talk about intangibles, we have to treat it the way it was envisioned when the OnePlus 9 Pro came out. So, the OnePlus 9 Pro has the same main sensor as the OnePlus 10 Pro. It just has a better wide angle, but let's talk about the main sensor because the OnePlus 10 Pro still has that main sensor. Now this main sensor is probably on paper one of the most ultimate hybrid shooters because what it does is the following. It allows you to have less of a crop, but more importantly, like Sony, it allows you to shoot at 4K 120 frames per second. So you really have an opportunity, like if you're a content creator or just making fun films around the house, whether it's you picked up your phone to film some special event, of having that option to really get stable slow motion footage for certain situations. Another thing that sets this phone apart is charging. Typically when you're buying domestic, you're stuck with slow charging, whether you have an Apple, iPhone, a Samsung, or a Pixel. OnePlus is bringing that fast technology over here, so if you have a dead phone, it's only going to take you 37 minutes for it to be fully up and running at 100% battery life. And that's with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery. So that is game changing. So now let's talk about gaming. There were some reports of, you know, severe thermal throttling, and that's, you know, kind of commonplace with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. But what we're seeing now with the OnePlus is a lot better behavior. And some people think it might be the phone to get outside of like a Vivo or an IQ to actually use for gaming if you want to stay in the Snapdragon and support the bands over here. Now let's talk about cameras. Again, we're talking about a true hybrid shooter. So one of the things that they did on the, the Sony IMX789 that's specifically made for OnePlus, so you won't see it in the Oppo brands, is it's the sensor size is 16 by 11. So if we think of a 16 by 9 aspect ratio, let's say for a sensor, if I wanted to you know, use the typical 4 by 3 format for photos, I'm going to have a massive crop, which I'm basically throwing away pixels. So with this 1611 and allowing for hybrid lens type system to allow allow me to take, take advantage of basically in software saying, all right, go to 16 by nine mode, go to four by three mode. I won't see a degradation or trade-off. So again, it's a true hybrid shooter in that sense. For example, I'll switch to my pixel. So now I'm on the pixel and I'm just going to tap between photo and video. As I start to tap between the two, you see that there's a bigger crop. So I'm actually losing resolution between going through the modes, whereas the OnePlus allows us not to do that. Another thing that is 
going on with the camera system is Samsung did, now I am one of the people that don't use wide angles unless they match. So like if you were to get the latest Oppo, you'll see that their main sensor is a Sony IMX 766 and their wide angle is a Sony IMX 766. Where that comes beneficial is not only do I have the same quality between the two sensors, color matching is a joke when, when you're using the same actual hardware. When you use different hardware made by different manufacturers, it's gonna cause an issue. So the OnePlus we know already is doing a good job, but Samsung actually said, hey, what are some ways for the people that are selling phones under $1,000 to have something to offer their clientele or their future customers? And one of the things that they did was they came up with this super ultra wide mode that allows a lot of things that are just built in. So you have a fisheye mode, you have a whirlwind mode, you have a lot of depth and a lot of play in the way I always recommend people to see if this works for you because this is what a lot of the OEMs are going to start doing by adding this. And if it doesn't, just use the main sensor. And if you need a little bit wider on video, just use a gimbal and turn stabilization off. And that will effectively get rid of the 16 by 9 crop and allow you to use a full version of the 16 by 11 sensor, which again will make it pretty wide. So this was just a quick video talking about the OnePlus. My OnePlus should be here in a couple of days and we're going to put it through its paces. And I also want to get Get in a MediaTek, uh, either 8100 or, or a 9000 series, because right now I can already tell you some of my friends from overseas that have some of these MediaTeks have told me like, hey, if you enjoy the 13 Pro battery life, guess what? We've got that battery life plus unbelievable performance. Again, if you're a T-Mobile customer and you have one of these older phones, go ahead and upgrade to the OnePlus 10 Pro. They're literally just begging you to buy it. And with that, we're out.